is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is a 75-year-old lady with a hard nuclear cataract. Uh, she has a thick arca senilis. Such elderly patients might not have the best functioning endothelial cells, so we need to be a little bit careful. In my experience, I've also noted that such eyes with broad and thick arca senilis are more vulnerable uh, to develop desmans membrane detachments at the incision sites. So I need to be mindful of these factors as I begin my surgery. Surgery is being done under topical anesthesia. The patient is very cooperative and calm. The globe is stabilized and the side port incisions are created. I always use intracameral preservative free xylocaine under the air. The patient usually feels a little bit of stinging sensation as we put in the anesthetic. But later on, it really makes the job much more easier. Capsule is stained and it usually stays in the eyes for about 15 seconds, during which I bend my 26 number needle, which I may use for excess. Trepan blue is irrigated out, followed by injection of dispersive OVD into the anterior chamber. I stabilize the globe and make my posterior limbal incision. And as I'm entering with my 2.8 millimeter keratome, I realize that the intracorneal tunnel is too long. Hence, I retract a little bit and re enter. This looks all right now. Time to perform the rexis. I am going in with my rexis forceps. I puncture the capsule, raise the flap and then begin tearing it. I am conscious not to create a very small rexis since I am dealing with a slightly bulky and hard nucleus. My aim is to get a 5.5mm rexis. It looks fine now. A hydro dissection needs to be very gentle since I am dealing with a, a large nucleus. Just a little bit of fluid, I can see the nucleus pop up slightly and that should be fine. We need to carefully observe these subtle signs. The nucleus just bulges out anteriorly just a bit. Rotate the nucleus a couple of times and now is the time to FACO. After aspirating the superficial cortex and epinucleus, I am trenching uh, into the substance of the nucleus to create a small central pit. Please note the power which I am using during trenching and I am using only torsional energy in continuous mode. I am creating a small central deep pit. This allows me to bury my phaco tip deep inside the uh, nucleus which ensures a firm grip and then the settings are changed to the longitudinal mode. The nucleus is held, lifted up slightly so that I can see it being 
rubbing against the anti-capsule as the vertical chopping with lateral separation is being carried out. The lateral separation needs to be done at progressively deeper planes until the posterior plate separates. Now please note the direction of the tip. It is turned the other side while burying and chopping so that I don't lose the grip during lateral separation. My preferred way is usually to hold the tip the other side especially during quadrant removal. I'm just used to the, it like that but in such hard cataracts I make it a point to always turn it the other way around so that the disengagement does not happen when we perform lateral separation. And just to let you know that the tip is 45 degrees balance tip. It's a very thin tip and this is a standard tip which uh, Alcon usually provides us in India. The nucleus is divided into smaller fragments and now is the time to emulsify them. As the first piece is being emulsified, the second piece also escapes out of the bag. Now this is something which is unwanted. Ideally I would want only one piece uh, out of the bag so that the management is much more controlled and when we have a second piece jump out which usually happens if the rexus is bigger there is a chance of it uh, touching the endothelium so i'm using my chopper to prevent the pieces from coming anteriorly and hit the endothelium the emulsification of the fragments is being done in a very controlled manner to minimize turbulence. OVD is being replenished. First I used a dispersive OVD which has sodium hyaluronate and uh, chondritin sulfate followed by HPMC underneath it. The remaining fragments are emulsified similarly in a very controlled manner. Just slowing down the process by using lesser energy minimizes the turbulence significantly. And the second instrument, my second instrument which usually could be a chopper or a sinski hook, always acts like a guard and it prevents the smaller fragments from flying around and hitting the cornea. Usually is placed at or just above the level of the phaco tip and just beside it. So the emulsification process is completed now. And as a habit, I always use some fluid from the side port since usually some fragments and lens fibers will be stuck in the side ports. It's important not to miss these tiny lens particles which can cause chronic recurrent uveitis in the late post-op period. The two tiny fragments are flushed out using OVD. Time for cortex extraction. There is very little cortex remaining which is quickly aspirated out. OVD is used to form the bag and a multi-piece lens is placed into the bag. First the distal haptic is gently negotiated into the bag. And then the proximal haptic along with the haptic is gently dialed into the capsular bag.
OVD behind and front of the lens is removed. Please note the posterior capsule folds, the classically seen oriented perpendicular to the origin of the haptics. These are nothing alarming and they usually don't cause any issues with the vision of the patient. The side ports are being hydrated. That's it, the case is done. And thank you for attention.